Pipe Network presents On this episode of Season 5, Reflection My father was an artist and uh, my mother was uh, a teacher, an educator and they were born, they were raised um, you know, pretty traditional Texas families of the 1950s and uh, but they weren't typical Texas people. And uh, my father was very involved in uh, theater and and social rights. He was actually the director of the boys club that was, we lived right on the border of Mexico in El Paso, Texas. And uh, I mean, we could literally see, we could see uh, the Rio Grande River and Juarez, Mexico from our porch at night. You know, <laughs> that's, we were just three miles away. And uh, yeah, so it was, it was interesting times, but we were the only uh, non-Hispanic family in our neighborhood. Catch the Pizarre Tales weekly as we tackle issues about education and share experiences about teaching. Hosted by Jay Australia, available on your favorite podcast platforms. Hey folks, welcome back to the Rajiv Show. And what an episode we have. We had a back-to-back recording and this is the second recording after my first recording with Wade Simmons. You guys gotta check out that conversation. It's an amazing conversation. And in this episode, we are going to talk about uh, our guest named, ja- named Jackie Jones. And uh, I don't, I have no, I have no information about her. This is an impromptu conversation, and I feel it's going to be an exciting one. So, with that in mind, uh, let me introduce, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce my guest, Jackie Jones. Hey, Jackie, how are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Thanks for I- having me. I hope I pronounced it right. I hope I didn't butcher anything on on the name. <laughs> no, m- most people like on social media know me as Jackie Naaman Jones, and uh, you can't get Jones too wrong. But Naaman can be said a number of ways. So, <laughs> so I so I'm safe. I'm I'm safe on the name. Yes. <laughs> you're just fine you're just fine <laughs> because sometimes people butcher my last name my my last name is very hard to pronounce Dore Swami so I just simplify it in three syllables Dor, Rice and Wami so if you just combine those three elements oh. that's that's how you that's how you pronounce my name <laughs> okay yeah well my uh, my newest daughter-in-law is half Filipino and uh I still can't say her maiden name. And, she, and when she married into the Jones family, she said she thought that was pretty cool. Because <laughs> <laughs> now everybody can say her last name. Yeah, that's that's awesome, awesome. So uh, before before we begin, I want to take us back to a uh, take us back to a time machine, time travel machine, and go back into the past. May I know who you are uh, if you and I were classmates in high school? Oh, in high school, I was very uh, involved in uh, theater and art. And uh, I was, well, that would have been, you know, the middle 1970s. So, you know, a lot of my male classmates, as they were graduating, there was a lot of fear about being drafted into the Vietnam War. And uh, so I was, I was a young hippie girl. It's all about peace. Wow, I I I don't know what why I suddenly rose rose in the ear it reminds me of the hippie generation. Is <laughs> that's the image yeah, that hit me? Yeah, <laughs> flowers. Yeah, flower children. Yeah, they were flower. called. Yeah, must have been a crazy time to be alive at that time. It was. Yeah, it really was. Uh, my father was an artist, <clears throat> and uh, 
My mother was a, a teacher, an educator, and they were born, they were raised, um, you know, pretty traditional Texas families of the 1950s. And, uh, but they weren't typical Texas people. And uh, my father was very involved in uh, theater and, and social rights. He was actually the director of the boys club that was, we lived right on the border of Mexico in yeah. El Paso, Texas. Yeah. And uh, I mean, we could, Literally see, we could see uh, the Rio Grande River and Juarez, Mexico from our porch at wow. night. You know? <laughs> That's, wow. We were just three miles away. And uh, yeah, so it was, it was interesting times, but we were the only uh, non-Hispanic family in our neighborhood. So everybody I went to school with, anybody that was my friends was uh, not only Hispanic, but they were traditional Catholic, and uh, my family were Christian, but we were anything but traditional, anything, you know, my, they were artists and creative people, and so the friends that I did have, uh, <laughs> I, you know, it seemed that they wanted to be friends with me just so they could get inside our house to see what was <laughs> in our house, you know, the really? kind of art that my dad had hanging on his artwork. And um, we were more a curiosity than anything, I, I think, when I was growing up. But uh, yeah, it translated pretty well into my adult life because at that time when I was in uh, the summer between first and second grade, my dad was invited to be in a movie and uh, he was the the lead role in that film yeah. and he being an artist he created all the sets and the props he did all the props and my mother uh, was a pretty good seamstress so she made the main costumes and and uh, you know it turned out to be a pretty bad film I mean the um, they had a big premiere one night in El Paso, Texas in 1966, the year it was made. And uh, it was so bad that the theater canceled the rest of the run Aww. of the show. And uh, and so it disappeared for like 27 years. And then, uh, so I grew up and I would tell my friends stories about this time I was in this movie with my dad because I was in it. We, I played the role of the little girl and, uh, our dog was in it. And, uh, you know, I, I tell my friends stories about this. I held on to it, you know, I had good memories because I was with my dad. And uh, so 27 years go by and I'd look for it and I finally given up. And then my dad calls me one day in 1993 and says, you'll never believe what I just saw on television. <laughs> so... <laughs> You know, have you ever heard of the show Mystery Science Theater? Yeah. They, uh, they, they've been around a long time. They're a pretty popular show amongst uh, self-proclaimed, like, nerds and, uh, you know, people that like kind of counterculture stuff, I guess. But, but the show is about this guy and these robots that get shot into space and their punishment is that they have to watch bad movies. And so they <laughs> they make fun of these movies. They riff these movies and they find the worst of the worst movies that are in public domain and they put them on their show. And somehow they found this movie that my family was in 27 years earlier. And they put it on their show and it became an instant hit. And it, it became famous as wow. the worst movie ever made. <laughs> and it's been taught in, in film school as everything not to do in filmmaking. Oh, I mean, it's like, it, <laughs> there's just, I mean, this is, there's, <laughs> a, I wrote a book about it. And, and if you look it up, I'll just tell your audience the name and they can look it up for themselves. I won't yeah. go into the sure. whole story, but it's sure, called sure. Mon Monos. Uh, Manos, M-A-N-O-S, The Hands of Fate. 
So if they look that up, sounds, and they, um, that's all they got to look up. Sounds like a good topic also. Oh, it's a whole nother thing. But, but I think the story I would tell here is um, how, you know, my dad, he was a very uh, creative, expressive human. He had a dark side. He had a lot of depression and, and, uh, And uh, then he got he remarried after my parents divorced and the woman he married didn't after a few years she decided she didn't want me as part of their lives. It was hard. I mean we lived within walking distance but she wouldn't allow us to see each other. And then this film got famous and for some weird reason, if it was related to this movie, Yeah. she would let us get together you know and i included him in a lot of things i in 2016 i i wrote and produced with some other people uh, a sequel and my to the movie and my dad was part of that and, yeah and uh you know he he got to be a part of a lot of things and we were able to have a relationship in yeah. his for years because of this terrible movie. I mean, it, it's, I don't know how else we would have had these opportunities and experiences. And uh, and he had as much fun as, a, as, as I have with it. Like when people say, well, how do you feel about, you know, you were in this movie that people make fun of and it's, it's known to be so terrible. <laughs> and I say, well, You know, for one thing, it wasn't my fault. It was just six years old, I, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but, but my dad, you know, it wasn't his fault either. He actually was a very good actor and won awards. Uh, it was just a really bad movie. But, <laughs> but you know, the, the thing is, it did get done. It got finished. A lot of people try to make movies, and, and they don't get it done. And I think that's one of the things that people really love about it. It's as bad as it is. There's something really captivating, and they can't. They say it's like a train wreck. It's so bad you can't look away. But um, for me and my dad, it really it gave us some really amazing times together. Wow, that's that's interesting. I I, I love. I'm I'm just blown away. I feel like I'm the audience in this context because from the storytelling, the experiences. And the enjoyment that you have, and the love for, and the passion for the arts, is there, and it's instilled in you. And and I don't know if I'm if I'm wrong that art is life for you because you breathe it, you lived it, and you you you've seen it, you breathe it, you've tasted art, and somewhat art has been a part of you. I don't know if I'm I'm wrong. Always. Always. I mean, since, uh, let's see, one of my early jobs, when in my early 20s, I lived in the beautiful wine country of Northern California, and I got a, my, a job in a tasting room, a winery tasting room and hospitality, and, and, uh, and I did that for a few years. It was a lot of fun, and yeah. I learned a lot, but I wanted to be a a self-employed artist and I uh, one day I just woke up and I said hey I'm gonna do hand-painted t-shirts you know and I I mean I literally had no money I went to this local t-shirt shop and I talked the woman into giving me three dozen blank t-shirts and I told her I'd pay her in a week yeah <laughs> and uh, and I got some paint and I went home and I painted some designs that I thought the could sell out of the tasting rooms yeah. and I took them to, and I knew everybody because I lived in a tiny town. There were 50 wineries okay. with a address okay. of this town of 8,000 people. I mean, yeah. 50 wineries. And I knew everybody because, you know, I knew all the tasting room managers. So I took these t-shirts to my friends yeah. and, uh, and they'd take a few and they sold and I built this, big business you know just doing hand-painted t-shirts and then one day this woman said i i love your designs 
do you do walls? Do you, have you ever done like special wall treatments or murals? I said, no, but I can do it. And then I ended up, I had a 30 year career doing high end faux finish, doing murals and marbling and textures, you know, plaster texture finishes. And, and I just turned 63. So I promised my children, I wasn't going to climb scaffolding and high ladders anymore. <laughs> so now, now, you know, I have this beautiful studio and uh, I'm selling my art and uh, I'm working on a, a documentary right now. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm working on a, oh yeah, there's another show out. Um, you can see the, the uh, trailer for it on YouTube. I can send you the link for it. Sure, um, uh, we'll we put the link on the show notes as well. Yeah, I mean, I have a lot of different projects going. I have my art, I teach painting classes, both in person and online. I'm working on the documentary. I'm working on this web series that I star in. It's nice. it's like, it's I, I'm an artist, but I'm also, uh, you know, easily distracted. So I get <laughs> a whole lot of different things going at the same time you know somebody yeah. will say hey have you thought of this and i said don't give me any more ideas i don't need <laughs> any new ideas i have the same problem i think it's a curse of an artist sometimes that uh, that right? is one thing that is one thing i hit so uh, every time my father calls me uh, when, when he's in india and i'm here uh he hates it when i'm uh, when my laptop is on is because I'll be clicking away while he'll be doing his thing. It's, <laughs> it's oh, just annoying. Oh no. <laughs> because I can't sit down. Oh, and, well, I can understand that. The thing is, for me personally, is if you, you and I are having a conversation, having dinner, something interesting moving around in your background or thing, normally everyone's reaction is they'll turn around. For me... For me, what what would make, what would make me lose focus is that it that not just that, but everything around. I'll focus on everything that's going on. That is like yes, it's a curse. Sometimes it's a curse. It's a pain in the ass. You know, there are many times yeah. when I'm confronted with people for certain reasons. Something happens. Something happens in the thing. I forgot what I'm talking about. That's. <laughs> That's why every time it's uh -oh. a problem of mine. <laughs> yes, I understand that too. My, my problem is that I'm uh, always thinking of the next thing and whatever's in my hand, I put it down and then I put something on top of it yeah. and then I can't find it and I don't understand how I lost my keys when I never left the <laughs> small room. I mean, Artists. it's like I didn't even leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> this is this has been a creative, creative conversation. I love it. It's it's all about creating, uh, creating. I I love your stories, and uh, I I I want to imagine. I'm trying to imagine when you said you guys live by the 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 hills, the hills or the Canyons of Pasadena, uh, the the place in Pasadena. Uh, oh, I live uh, in West Texas, uh, yeah. but where I, but when I lived in Northern California, that was uh, just north of San Francisco. Yeah, and the the view because I I'm always fascinated with American culture especially in the west where there's no water there's not much water and thing i'm always fascinated about how you guys stay alive and survive in the at, at that tropical heat here in the philippines manila is the hottest city and you know that is that in itself is uh, that in itself is the thing that's the toughest to people can survive nowadays because it's either raining so heavily that it floods the street or not it's mm -hmm. just 
it's just hot as hell. You you have to switch on the AC when you're in in town. Yeah, well, things are changing quickly here. I mean, I've seen places that, you know, have reached record temperatures and uh, people don't have air conditioning because they never needed it. And, and suddenly they do and it's not there. Or, you know, like uh, places that don't rain this time of year that have got gotten completely flooded in the last couple of weeks it's just everything's changing yeah. everywhere all over the world england God, i heard that london reached record temperatures and yeah. a lot of people mostly elderly people died because they didn't have air conditioning yeah, yeah. we all have to i don't know i don't know how we're gonna prepare yeah, I guess we have to live through it in order to get to it. I don't know where I well, heard that. I, I hope we're learning. I hope we're learning uh, alternative ways of doing things. Oh, yeah. I got to ask, though. This is a curious question. I got to ask. During the 2020 lockdown, were you productive as much as I am? I am, or you were you were alone and you were stuck in your own box because for me I'll share my personal experience first I was depressed because I was a fresh graduate and lockdown was very serious you need to alcohol yourself every 25 seconds <laughs> I kid you not you had to alcohol yeah. every 25 seconds mask face shield everything and saying, I got to ask, what were, were you doing during the lockdown? Were you also as creative or you were in a creative block? Um, yeah, definitely as creative. I mean, maybe harder for me to focus because, um, well, a couple of things. I had some health uh, things last year and in, in October I had some seizures and i've never had seizures in my life but it it was like oh. um it was like my brain was a <clears throat> computer and shut down and had to reset and yeah. so my memory so so many things were screwed up so i went through you know a lot of that was uh, depression and, and uh, fatigue and but i had like i said earlier I had this beautiful studio space and and that saved me and I was doing some online uh, acting classes yeah. which which would not have been available to me if not for COVID because the school is um, several hundred miles away from me in, <clears throat> in Canada so I got these wonderful classes that I learned so much and um yeah i i did a lot of other things i mean i i i made the most of it i think it uh, it forced me to to um look into things outside of my comfort zone and i think i've grown quite a bit because of it powerful powerful uh I, I just love this creative conversation. It's just it's just been an absolute blast having you in this conversation because it's rare that I get to talk to an artist by art on art. Uh, how about aesthetics? I gotta ask though, what is your... Sorry, I, I keep saying I gotta ask though a lot. <laughs> it's, kind of, it's, it's, it's a habit of mine. I wanted to yeah, add... Yeah, I understand. Yeah, I wanted to add. Uh, what is your what is your style when it comes to creating your art? You you mentioned you had an art style. Um, yes, I mean my main art is um, <clears throat> well. I I think I follow my father in this way that I I like finding new life. To old things I hate to throw things away so I find a way to turn them into art and I live in a 
town in the forest of Western Oregon. I'm about an hour from the ocean, but I'm in the forest. And, uh, and it's an old logging town of only um, a thousand people, it's just a small little town. And so a lot of houses that are a hundred years or, or older than a hundred years old. And, and I would see people like remodeling their homes and they'd be taking out these old windows or doors and uh, they just be, I'd see them leaning against their garage or getting ready to get burned up in a pile. And so I started collecting them and then I cut the doors, the panels into individual panels. So I can get like five pieces of art out of one door. And I enhance the character like of, uh, of what, what it already has. I add color and enhance the character and then I do my art on that. So I paint on uh, all kinds of reclaimed items like cabinet doors or, um, you know, crown molding or, you know, all kinds of things. And, uh, but my art itself is, it's symbolic. It always has meaning to me. Like I go through phases. Sometimes yeah. I do, uh, and I realize over time. So I like to do trees, which I believe uh, symbolizes uh, being grounded, yeah. you know, but still in the sky. And I do uh, bats and uh, crows, uh, mainly for flying. And then I've been doing a lot of octopus lately and now jellyfish. So, you know, I think they cover everything. Animals. Oh, I do a lot of dragonflies too. Nice, you do Yeah, animals. you'll have to see. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll give you my uh, Etsy uh, link too. I'll sure, just send sure. you all my links. Yeah, sure, absolutely. I'd love, I'd love to, I would love to see all those links. Unfortunately, uh, Zoom is telling us that it's close to time up. Before we wrap up, of course, my my listeners would love to connect with you via social media. How will they find you on social media? The easiest way is on my fan page on Facebook. And it's Jackie Naiman Jones fan page. Uh, Jackie with an E-Y, J-A-C-K-E-Y. N E Y M A N J O N E S fan page. And then also I have a website, Jackie's Monos. M A N O S Monos. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I want to thank my guest, Jackie. It, it, it was spectacular. It was creative. It was productive. The, the morning for me now, it's morning time for me now. So. What a way to start a day with uh, with Jackie. And it's an amazing, amazing conversation. I want to say thank you so much for dropping by. I hope you drop by again and we continue our storytelling here on the Rajiv Show. I'd, I'd love to. I, I've got a lot of new things coming up to talk about. So yeah. thanks for having me, Rajiv. Thank you for Thank you for showing up and being here on time. So thank you so much. With that in mind, cheers, folks, and we will see you in the next episode.